everybody, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. I believe this message is going to be a powerful blessing in your life. And I'll be right back at the conclusion to pray for you. You know, yesterday I began talking to you about a subject I entitled, Things Don't Just Happen. And I didn't finish it, and I'm not going to attempt to finish it today. It takes me days to, to deal with this subject. But one of the things I want you to appreciate and understand that I believe is a key that you must have with you the rest of your life is as long as you live, please don't be fooled by religious people and all these religious sayings that he got the whole world in his hands. It's religiously true, but it's scripturally wrong. And I did establish that God is not in charge of this world. And I say it boldly because I've been preaching for 40 years since 76. And I know what I'm telling you. I've had personal encounters with God, been to heaven. I've had personal encounters with the adversary. And I know what I'm telling you. And one of the reasons why a lot of religions are spreading and are taking us in many ways is because of some of these religious errors or lies that we've bought. And so many bad things are happening to God's kids because we bought lies. We, the devil have sold us some lies. And, it's, and because it, it works for us, for whatever reason, it doesn't put demands on us. Um, many years ago, a man I respected dearly that I've gone to be with the Lord, Papa Hagen, Daddy Hagen from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Jesus will appear to Daddy Hagen every now and then and reveal deep truths of scriptures to him. And this particular time, they were talking, Pastor Rod, and Jesus was revealing some deep things to him. And then suddenly at the point, a demon interrupted the conversation. And Jesus kept talking. He kept talking. And, and he couldn't hear what Jesus was saying. And Jesus wouldn't stop talking. He kept talking. And the demon kept interrupting. Interfering with the conversation. And he couldn't hear. And he was expecting Jesus to rebuke the devil or to do something. And he wouldn't rebuke the devil. He wouldn't stop speaking. He wouldn't do anything about it. And after a while... He became frustrated. And he said, in the name of Jesus, get out. And the demon left. So he said to Jesus, he said, Lord, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you rebuke the demon? He said, because I can't. I can't do it. I don't rebuke demons anymore. I gave you the power of attorney. And I said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. Not me. You have the authority to cast out devils. I don't. And that changed his whole mind setting. From this belief that the Lord is going to fix it. And the Lord is going to do something about it. And he realized that to cast out devils and to deal with the adversary is the responsibility of the believer and not God. You can look at me with that temper look and it doesn't really bother me. Hmm? I'm just going to say it as it is. Tell somebody it is what it is. You have the responsibility to deal with the enemy. In the name above every other name, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. At the mention of that name, Things in heaven and on earth and in the underworld shall bow their knee and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Before I download these keys, I want you to come with me to the book of First Thessalonians, the second chapter and the 18th verse, First Thessalonians 2.18. Just want to give you some keys because People don't understand why revival tarries. Tell somebody why revival tarries. Why revival? We need a revival. How many of you believe we need a revival? Revival simply means when God comes to town. That's all. 
When God comes to town, the devil leaves town. And if you want God to come to town, please understand, like John Wesley of the Methodist Church said, it seems to me that God can do nothing for humanity until somebody prays. Things don't just happen. Don't believe that revival just comes. Revival don't just happen because God promised revival. We have a responsibility. When God makes a promise, you and I have a responsibility to do something about what God promised because of the rules of engagement. And I did establish that Satan is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Luke the 4th chapter, the 5th and the 6th verse. Satan said to Jesus, the glory, the kingdom, the riches of this world which you see was delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Who gave it to Satan? Not God. Adam ceded the dominion mandate to Satan. And so, so Satan has the legal right to operate, to kill, steal, and destroy, and oppress humanity. And the Bible said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And, and, and let me tell you, the, the advantage of the adversary is to keep you and I ignorant. He knows everything about us. We don't know anything about him. Paul said the other day, he said, we are not ignorant of his devices, lest he gains advantage over us. And one of the devices of the adversary, the accuser, is to keep you and I ignorant. And we can't afford to be ignorant. It's a luxury, we can't afford it. Somebody say, I hear you. And I want you to see a scripture about a man that went to the third heavens. If there is a third heavens, then as a logician, it stands to reason that there is a second heavens and there is a first heaven. It is believed that the first heaven is the atmospheric heavens. And the second heaven is where principalities and powers and Satan dwells. Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavens. I didn't bring any of my materials because I wasn't supposed to be here. I'm here by some kind of providence. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, I hear you. But if you read some of my materials, like Binding the Strong Man, you will see the job descriptions of cosmic powers. What principalities does, what powers does, what rulers does, rulers of darkness of this world, and what spiritual hosts of wickedness are responsible of doing in the affairs of nations. And unless we have understanding of these things, we can pray, but our prayers will not be effective. And Paul said, look at it. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. This is Paul speaking. Paul the apostle, been to the third heavens, operated in all the powers of the world to come. This guy was no joke. And Paul said to the church in Thessalonica, he said, I would have come unto you once and even again, but Satan resisted me. What we don't understand is that one of the major assignments of Satan, the adversary, is to resist us. Somebody say resistance. is one of the strategy and one of the assignment of the enemy after the fall of man, he took hold of the dominion mandate God gave to Adam and his assignment is to resist humanity. So you can be born again and be tongue speaking and he will still resist, oppose. That is his assignment. His job is to oppose us. And that's why Jesus walked the face of his head with that understanding that there is somebody here whose assignment is to hinder, is to resist, and is to oppose you. I want to show you something. Go to Luke chapter 3. Luke the 12th chapter and the 21st verse. Luke 3, 21 and 22. I want to show you something. 
Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that uh -huh. Jesus, also being baptized and praying. Jesus what? Baptized and praying. All the people went to the baptism in Jordan and it was business as usual. Jesus got there and realized that this Jordan is a place of prophetic activities. That you just don't come and step in Jordan and return the same way. And if something divine or supernatural is going to happen in this Jordan, he needed to connect with heaven. And everybody came and prayed. Everybody came and was baptized and nothing happened. But when he came to baptism and pray, something happened. And look at what happened. And being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. The heaven opened because he was the son of God. Can somebody talk to me? No. The Bible said the heavens opened because he was the son of God. No. The heavens opened because he was a prophet. The heavens opened because he's been in the church for a long time. The heavens opened because he was an apostle. Because he was a teacher. He was a pastor of a mega church. Because he was very anointed. Because he was very gifted. But the heavens opened because? Because if the son of God had to pray for the heavens to open, who do you think you are? Come on somebody. If he had to pray for the heavens to open, then you ought to do more than just what he did. Look at it. Go ahead. And the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. Mm -hmm. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son. In thee I am well pleased. Thank you. Look at me. You know why we don't have open heavens over our communities, our nation, our cities, and our churches anymore? It's because of prayerlessness. There is so much spiritual indulgence in the church. That we are having a good time, enjoying the move of God, and we have forgotten that the true church is not here, it's out there. Are you hearing me, somebody? That we are here to take charge. We are here to dominate. We are here literally to hijack nations and to hijack communities and to hijack cities. Somebody say, I hear you. We are spiritual hijackers. That is the anointing we carry. And Jesus comes to town and he hijacks the whole place. Everything comes to a standstill. You know, many years ago, there was a man called D.L. Moody. Lived in Chicago. He was sitting on a train driving through Rochester, New York, upstate New York. The train stopped. At Rochester, New York. He didn't come out of the train. People were coming off the train and there were people coming on board the train. Suddenly, the anointing fell upon the city and people were crying and speaking in other tongues and falling on the power all over the city. And this young man went to this lady and said, what is this craziness going on all over the place? Have you seen? Have you heard? And he said, it's not craziness. It looks like Brother D.L. Moody is in town. Because that is what happened when he comes to town. <laughs> what a way to define the man. Is anybody hearing me? That is the way I want to be defined. That when I come to town, there is a shift. When I come to town, things happen. Are you hearing me, somebody? That is the way you ought to be defined. That when you come to town, God comes to town. Say yes. yes. You are a revivalist. It doesn't matter how you see yourself. You are carrying God. You are a vessel and a vehicle carrying the end time anointing. To bring about the end time revival and the end time harvest such as the world has never known it or seen it before. Say yes. Jesus prayed in baptism and the heavens opened. The only reason why the heavens opened because he prayed. It wasn't because he was the son of God. 
And he knew that if he had him praying, somebody was going to block and resist. The enemy prolongs. You know, let me tell you something. Come with me to James 5 and the 13 verse. James 5 and 13. Look at something in James 5, 13. I believe that this church is mature and you can handle meat. Amen. So I'm going to give you meat. I won't try to give you milk. Amen. Milk is for babes. You can handle meat. James 5, 13. Look at something here. Is any among you afflicted? Then let him pray. You see, this is a divine prescription to the folks afflicted, oppressed in the church. He said, is anyone among you oppressed, hurt, offended, afflicted, tormented? He said, don't sing, don't tweet, don't talk about it, don't go on the phone, don't cry, don't complain, don't leave the church, don't tell the whole world about it. He said, do what? Do what? It means you keep praying till the affliction lifts or breaks off you. You don't stop praying till it lifts. See, I hear you. But when we are afflicted, we do everything but to pray. He didn't say sing. He didn't say cry. He didn't say talk about it. He said do what? Pray. That is a divine prescription for those who hurt among us. Now when we don't pray, when we are afflicted, you know what it does? It prolongs the affliction. And we never get well, and we never get healed. And we become bitter. Come on. And there are so many folks in the church who are bitter. They've lost the joy of their salvation because of affliction. And they didn't do what the Bible said they should do. We do every other thing but what God said we should do. That's it. Anyone afflicted among you, let him. Yeah. Lift up your hand, pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute, please. Kidabo shakahadas, lega di borodo kati sadahasa, shelagi do lo gronde ki prosetas, le karido kosi kadahasis, eki do lo grodima, mosi komo lo hosa, ike lo kosadahas, me ila kadiba ansida, open your mouth, shiko bolo se, keda kiso, somebody cry out, ikanda labro sende, let the affliction be lifted. Ipo kada bahasa le kadi boko la hada hasis le maradu kandi boka da hada wola haki amandalia wandele ambale kira bakuti liki balahasa hadon hadon mei kida la haduli asa. Thank you. Thank you. You know I've dealt with so many things and people ask me all the time and they say. What is the secret? Sometimes it's like you're down, you're finished. And suddenly, you're back again. And you are more anointed and dangerous than before. And I've said, I've learned. I've learned to speak in other tongues. I've learned to talk to the Father. I've learned to stay in the throne room. And when you stay in the throne room, and you learn the skills of high level in accessory prayer, you can override every adversary. You can override every situation the enemy brings to you. Shout yes. yes. Come with me to Luke the 18th chapter. Reading from the first verse to the 8th verse. Luke the 18th chapter. I want to give you some keys. You know, I love preaching and I love to see people like excited, screaming, and jumping, and feeling good. I love that. It makes me happy too. But I'm sick and tired of seeing the devil messing with God's kids. And they don't know what to do. Because after the excitement, when the enemy comes at you, you don't need to call on me, on my name. You must have some keys. When he comes at you, you got to know what to do. I remember when I got saved and... My father, my father was a Freemason, 
and he was a grand wizard for the Freemason. And my dad had a snake in the house we're living in. And he communicates with the snake. And he was an ambassador. He traveled and went to London. And one of my bishops, and now he's been with me for 40 years. And uh, I said to him, I want us to fast for three days and let's kill this snake. And it was just between us. None of our wives, nobody knew about it. And on the second day, my dad called me from London and he said, son, I said, dad, he said, uh, that snake, make sure nobody kills it because it's not going to hurt anybody. I said, what did you say? He said, make sure nobody kills my snake because it's not going to hurt anybody. And I said, wow. That was a familiar spirit. He knew what we were thinking or what we were planning by a familiar spirit. You see, they also have a word of knowledge. They also have a word of wisdom. Like we have word of knowledge and word of wisdom, they also have it. We have to understand how the enemy works. It seems to me that the church is so ignorant of the workings and the adversary's devices. You can't overcome your opponent if you don't have understanding and knowledge about him. And I told my bishop, I said, you know what? It looks like the old man knows our move, so let's just leave it alone. And one time I was a young preacher, and he said to me, he said, son, come here. And I went, he was huge and very powerful. And he said, follow me. And he took me to one of his properties. And we had these coconut trees standing there. And there were fruits on all the coconut tree except one. And he spoke to the tree and said, I will come back next year. And if there is no fruit on you, I will cut you down. Do you hear me? And he walked off. And I said, Lord God Almighty, my father is gone off. Spirit of insanity has come on the old man. <laughs> the following year, about the same time, the Holy Spirit reminded me, and I went to check, and there was fruit on the tree. I said, wow. That was when I started understanding how the other world works. And I started studying about how Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and they obeyed. And the Bible said, and the fig tree answered Jesus. Now if the fig tree answered Jesus, then it stands to reason logically, ladies and gentlemen, that the fig tree said something. He heard Jesus said something. The fig tree answered Jesus. So the fig tree could hear. It can hear because when Jesus commanded the fig tree to die, it died within 24 hours. It complied. That means they have ears to hear. The sea has ears. They hear. The wind can hear. The earth can hear. The Bible said, that says the Lord, render this man on this earth childless make his family childless and let them not prosper on the earth so the earth can hear Moses spoke to the earth and the earth opened up his mouth and swallowed up the sons of Korah Jesus spoke to the fig tree to the sea to the wind and they comply. The church is still in baby stage Christianity. Some of you are looking at me strangely. Pastor Rodney, where did you bring this guy from? I'm part of you. I'm your brother. I'm just at the backside of the desert. The church is still ignorant. Of the devices of the enemy. Look the 18th chapter. 1 to 8. Look at something here. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men what? 
Men what? Men what? Ought to pray. Not when we come to church. Not breakfast, lunch, or dinner time. Always. Always is always. Why always? Because your adversary is as a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. Because his assignment is to resist you and to resist the manifestation of your prophecy. Uh. He don't want to see the manifestation of what God has said about you. So he puts up a fight. And it's time for the church to fight back. Tell somebody, fight back. Fight back. I preached a message last year and entitled the message, it's time to say something. You've been quiet for too long. And the enemy keeps speaking against you and you ain't saying nothing. It's time to open your mouth and say something. Yeah. Until God said, let there be light, there was nothing. Until you open your mouth and say something, nothing is going to happen. Tell somebody it's time to say something. Tell somebody, say something. We have a responsibility. Things don't just happen, church. Don't let anybody fool you. You know, years ago, I had a friend of mine that had a mega church. And I was in his church on Sunday morning, and Dr. Lester Samuel, one of the generals of God, came in that church and preached. And when Dr. Samuel preached, he said there was coming a wave. He said, I see a wave coming. And it will sweep across this nation and this continent, and it shall begin in this house. After that service, we went to breakfast. And I said to him, I said, my friend, you have to declare a fast and get the church to begin to pray like you've never prayed before for the manifestation of that prophetic word. And he said, why do I have to do that? And I said, because God just revealed his original intent for your house, for this house, and for the nations through your house. And I said, Satan is going to come after you. You know what he told me? He said, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. And he takes care of his business. And I said, brother, it doesn't work that way. I told him. I said, it doesn't work that way. From that day, the devil striked. Strike his family. Killed. Attacked. Cancers. Scattered the church. Divided the leadership. Destroyed everything. He's out of the ministry now. And the prophecy came to pass. But he wasn't part of it. Because he refused to understand the rules of engagement. That the devil doesn't know God's plan about your life until that says the Lord. When the prophecy is revealed. You remember when the wise men came to Herod. These wise men were not Christians. They were astrologers. They weren't believers. The wise men were not Christians. They weren't believers. They operated by familiar spirits. And they saw the star of the Son of God and understood what it stood for and what it meant. And when they told Pharaoh, they told Herod about the star and the prophets revealed the prophecy. And this was the prophecy. Thou, O Bethlehem of Judea, out thou not the least among all the cities of Judea, and yet out of thee shall come the ruler of my people. When he heard that word, ruler of my people, he was threatened, and a decree went forth to annihilate all children under the ages of two. Why? They wanted to kill the deliverer. They wanted the life of Jesus. And so many kids died. And the only way Jesus escaped was because he had a praying father who had a dream. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, take the little child and run and hide him in Egypt. Why? It was because of the prophecy. I have seen people receive great prophecies and after the prophecy, all 
hell broke loose. And they asked me, what went wrong? I was doing fine. My business was doing okay. Till that prophet said, he sees money coming into my hands. And I said, because you don't understand the rules of engagement. You thought that after that prophetic word, things were just going to happen. No, it doesn't happen that way. When the prophetic word comes, you have to contend for the prophecy. You put up a fight because the enemy will come after you. You can look at me any way you want to look at me. You know something? I don't live in America. I live in Ghana. And after, after here, I'm gone. You, you need a visa to find me where I am. And I have a lot of angels around me. You can't reach me. So don't worry about it. See, I hear you. I have seen so many good people killed of God, destroyed. I've seen preachers. I have a lot of great friends of mine who have been killed. Destroyed with scandals. The enemy come and steal, kill, and destroy because they took for granted the rules of engagement. They believed things that were not true. I had a preacher friend of mine that died recently. I was in his church in Atlanta just about two years ago with Pastor Paula and spoke to him about some situations and told him what he needs to do. And Pastor Paula asked me and said, what do you think? And I said, he's not going to do it. He won't do it. He won't do it. He's too secure financially. He's too secure. He has too much working for him. And I said he can't humble himself and come down to the level that he must come to to get God back into his life. He won't do it. He's too secure. The system in America here makes men heroes and stars instead of men. And it doesn't make God God. It makes everybody great. People don't ask the church to pray for them anymore. I preach, I've seen miracles, and I ask my church, pray for me. I always, I'll go on my knees and I say, everybody pray for me. And I don't see that in America. In America, send your prayers, we will pray for you. Send your prayers, we will pray for you. As long as you come forth as a hero and a star, the devil will take you down. Because nobody stands alone. God never intended that the body should stand alone. We are, we are interconnected. We need one another. And it doesn't matter how gifted you are. You need the brethren and the brethren needs you. And it's when we stay together that we are strong. Somebody say yes. We underestimate who we are dealing with. I tell people, I said, when I hear people daring Satan... I feel very sad for them because you don't know who you're dealing with. I'm not magnifying the devil, but I think we are ignorant of who we are dealing with. I hear Christians saying, Satan, I bind you. You can't bind Satan. You can't bind him. You can resist him steadfastly in the faith. You can rebuke him. You can speak the word to Satan, but you can't bind him. It's not yet time for him to be bound. He'll be bound after we return after the rapture for a thousand years in the bottomless pit by one angel, not two angels, not a thousand angels, one angel will take hold of Satan and bind him with a chain. Just one angel. But it's not yet time. And we need to understand who we're dealing with. When Satan fell, he was fired in heaven by Michael, the archangel. Michael took him down. One angel took him down. Just one. Michael took him down. The minister of defense. <laughs> took Satan down. Sometimes when I'm in deep warfare and intercession, I will hear the spirit say, deploy and call for Michael and appeal to the father for his release. One angel took him down. He lost his place in heaven, but he did not lose his power and he did not lose his anointing because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. 
He lost his office, but he did not lose his power. And when Jesus came, he said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. So the enemy has power, but we have authority. He has power, but he doesn't have authority. Because authority is designated. You can't have authority if you haven't been under authority. The centurion said, I am a man under authority. And I said to one, go, and it is done. And another, come, and it is done. Why? Because I am under authority. So authority is designated. You can't have authority if you are a rebel. And Satan has power, but he doesn't have authority because he's a rebel. And what we have is authority. And by authority, we can restrict. We can restrain. We can interrupt. We can hold back. We can suspend activities of the powers of the, of the, powers of the dark kingdom. If we don't understand what we are dealing with, we can take this well. The kingdoms of this world are to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And we need to understand how our kingdom works and how their kingdom works. Is anybody hearing me? Somebody say, talk to me, talk to me. You don't look at me any way you want to look at me. I'm just telling you as it is. I'm just sick and tired seeing the devil messing with the church. And every time, when I went back to Ghana from America, people were dying. There was a funeral every week. And I stood there one Sunday morning, and I said, I suspend funerals in this house until further notice. And I said, in the name of Jesus, henceforth nobody dies unless over 70, 80, 90 going. And I don't do funerals. I was not called to do funerals. I wasn't called to bury. I was called to raise the dead. And you can look at me any way you want to look at me. And from that time, from that time, funerals in the church ceased. And we bury people over 70, 80, 90 going. And the only services I attend is that of the old folks. And I just did that to make a statement that if you are young, stay alive, don't die. Refuse to die. Somebody say, I refuse to die prematurely. <laughs> say, I will not die prematurely. <laughs> say, I refuse to be killed. <laughs> say, I will not die <laughs> before my time. <laughs> By any means. <laughs> say, I will not be a victim. <laughs> I will not be a casualty <laughs> of any devices of the enemy. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I shall not die but I shall live and declare the works of God. If you believe it, shout yes. My job is to teach you how to fight. Because if I can teach you how to fight the enemy, you can survive anywhere. All the folks who have sat under me, it doesn't matter where they go in this world. When they pray, you will know where they are coming from. I don't pray nice prayers. I'm very objective and I'm straight to the point and I don't miss my target. When I hit you, I hit you hard. I hit you with intercontinental ballistic missiles. Blow you out of place. In the name of Jesus, say yes. yes. I don't do all these nice prayers. You know why? Because where I come from, the devil don't miss his target. He's very deliberate. And I, I started fighting in my mother's womb. When she took seed of me, they performed a D and C. And I aborted my twin and I was still hiding there. And I lost three of my fingers when Satan attacked me and came into my bedroom and compelled me to put my hand in fire. I know how the enemy works. So you can sit down there and look at me with that beautiful face of the United States of America. Because you don't know how the enemy works. 
You haven't experienced the cruelty of the enemy. But I'm telling you, this enemy is real. And I'm not frightening you, but you got to understand what you're dealing with. That one of his assignments is to resist you and is to oppose you and make sure that you never fulfill your assignment on earth. And that is what he did to Jesus. He came after him until the man left his head. Satan was on his case. And he never stopped praying till he left the earth. He never stopped. Because he understood that it is only in the place of prayer that we can override the enemy and superimpose God's counsel and enforce the will of God over the enemy. Heaven, hear me, look at me. I want to say some very hard things and you may not like me, but you know something? I really don't want to be liked anymore. I don't... I, I don't, want, I don't want to be liked by anybody. I don't want to be understood. And I, I said to a friend of mine, I said, he wanted me to come preach for him. And I said, if I'll preach for you, declare three days fasting before I come. And I said, if you can't declare three days fasting, I won't come. And he said, we have a great church. And I said, I don't care about your church. I said, I don't need any relevance. I'm already re relevant. I don't need you. To preach in your church to be anything. I'm already who I am by the grace of God. And I said, I said to him, I said, you know why you have to fast and pray? Your church is too dry spiritually. And if you don't pray to deal with the demons, when I come, I'm going to spend all my time casting out devils. Mm. Because the demons love dry places. Mm. And I said, your church is too dry for me. You know why we saw all those miracles yesterday? Because the atmosphere in this church is conducive for the move of God. I'm just telling you. When we're going, I was telling them, I said, Pastor Rodney has done a good job. I've been to mega churches in America. I preach in mega churches. From Bishop T.D. Jake's church, I dedicated the Potter's House to Kirby, Kirby John jo, uh, uh, Colwood's church in Houston, Texas, 30,000 people, Methodist church, the biggest Methodist church in America. I preach in mega churches. You got a good atmosphere here. Don't lose it. And I'm not saying that to be invited here. He will tell you I preach for him in Cape Town, in South Africa, several times. What you are seeing is who I am. I, I, and the lady on the organ will tell you when I used to pray for Larry Lee in uh, San Diego, Lighthouse Church, it's the same thing. I come and I hit it hard, say it as I have to say, you invite me back, praise God, you don't, it doesn't bother me. You know? I don't, I'm not looking to be approved and to be accepted of men. I stopped living that way long time ago. I've been so misrepresented that I've gotten used to it. Say, I hear, I hear you. Finish your reading. Saying that there was a, in a city a judge which feared not God, uh -huh. neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. You see what she said? Lest by, talk her to me, lest by, her continual coming, lest by, her continual coming, somebody says, persistence, persistence. breaks, breaks. Resistance. resistance. That is the key. And that is the key I want to give to you. Because I see Christians, we get weary too early. We get weary too early. We give up too early. That's right. We love our flesh too much. We are too comfortable. And if we want to see a move of God, we got to learn how to deal with this flesh. And this woman was so persistent that the judge said, I don't fear God. I have no regard for man. But this woman, she's too much trouble for me. Let me tell you something. You can weary the devil. 
Do you know that? Yeah, you can weary the devil. You can weary demons. You can so hit them that they will get tired of you. I've been to places when I come into the auditorium, the demons begin to cry out and say, why did you bring him here? What does he want here? Why did you invite him? Send him away. We don't want him here. Demons. They cry out and they speak and everybody hears them and say, why did you bring this man here? What does he want here? Send him away. We don't want him here. Tell somebody that is what I'm talking about. Hear me. If you claim to be anointed, unless demons recognize you, you are not anointed. I preached a message years ago entitled, Are You Known in Hell? If you are not known in hell, shut your mouth. The demon said, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? Turn to someone and say, who are you? Hello? Finish it, please. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Uh -huh. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Cry. Day cry. Night. Cry. 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 Persistence. Persistence. Stay at it. Day and night. Praying around the clock, day and night. Back home, we pray four times a day. We pray four times a day. It's a lifestyle. Four times a day. The Jews, three times a day. Muslims, five times a day. How many times a day do Christians pray? None. After service today, some of you are not going to pray until you go to bed. Even some of you, you don't pray when you go to bed. Sometimes I hear people say, well, I saw, I, I, I saw a cow chasing me, and I saw this. And I said, what did you eat before you went to bed? Steak. And the cow is coming for... A bit. <laughs> don't, don't mind me, don't mind me. Just wanted you to laugh. But, but the bottom line here is, let's face it, we don't even pray when we go to bed. We don't deliberately take a minute or two to pray and secure the family and the pastor and the church and the city and the community and the nation and pray for those in authority and our security agents. We don't. The only time we pray is breakfast time. Even breakfast, it's, it's difficult sometimes to pray. We don't pray anymore. We go to hotels and we are careful we don't want to say prayer over the meal anymore because we don't want to offend anybody. Praise God Almighty. Me, I go to eat. Sometimes people start eating and I say, hold it a minute, let us pray. And I say, bless the meal and that which is in their mouth and in their stomach. <laughs> because they eat without praying. And I said, that which has already entered their mouth. And it's in their stomach that they didn't pray over it. Let it be sanctified now in Jesus' name. And you can look at me and say he's radical. Call me any name you want to call me. And other religions don't mind publicly praying and doing what they have to do without shame, without embarrassment. And we complain and we have to apologize for who we are. Turn to someone and say, what is wrong with you? I don't apologize for who I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. Say yes. yes. Look at what Jesus said. And the Lord said, hear what the... I'm oh, sorry, I read that already. Mm -hmm. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge them what? Speedily. He will avenge them what? Speedily. If we cry unto him what day and night, he will avenge us what? Speedily. Say immediately, immediately, immediately. Somebody say immediately. You saw the scriptures we read yesterday in Acts the 16th chapter 
from the 25th to the 27th verse, the Bible said, and when they prayed and they sang praises, immediately, there was a suddenly, somebody say a suddenly, say immediately, we don't see immediately anymore, we don't see a suddenly anymore. We are always talking about what God did in the days of Papa Hagen and in the days of my grandfather in the faith T.L. Osborne and in the days of Oral Roberts. I, I, I've been with all these people. I've been with Dr. Osborne. He's my, he's my grandfather in the faith. When I went to heaven, they showed me the city of T.L. Osborne. And I went to Tulsa. My kids were in school in Tulsa. I went to Tulsa. And on my way going back to Maryland, the Spirit said, Change your flight. I was going through Houston, and the Spirit said, go through Chicago. So I called my daughter. I said, change my ticket. She said, to what? I said, ride me through Chicago. She said, no, Houston is better. I said, just take me through Chicago. And she said, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know, but just do it. And they know me. I can be weird sometimes. You know, the Holy Spirit don't need to act, don't need to, God does not need to explain himself. All these things where we have to, God, you have to explain to me. Tell me why. God doesn't have time to explain himself. Just obey. And I got to Chicago. My flight was delayed for two hours. And I said, well, here we go. I didn't say anything. So I was standing there and I said, let me go have coffee. So I went to the Starbucks. I was in the line for coffee and the spirit said lift up your eyes and see and when I lifted up my eyes T.L. Osborne was sitting back there having coffee and the Lord said go sit by him and talk to him so I walked to him and said grandpa he said Nicholas what are you doing here and I said I came to see you he said how did you know I was going to be here I said God told me to come to Chicago he said sit down and I said, Grandpa, I saw your city in heaven. Beautiful city. Not a house, not a mansion. A city. And the elder said to me, this is T.L. Osborne's city. And I said, that is my grandfather in the faith. Church, I don't know about you. But I'm just sick and tired of church as usual. I'm just telling you. When I read about all these things God did, and he's the same God and he's the same Holy Ghost. The Bible said Jesus Christ yesterday. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. How come God is not doing things he did yesterday? Today is because this generation... We have, we have become an instant generation. I thank God the way you run your services in this house. Everything is instant. Instant preaching, instant praise, instant worship, instant everything. God, you got to do it on my time. God is not going to do it on your time. He will do it on his time. If you want God, it's on his terms, not on your terms. Somebody lift up your hand, shout yes. All right, let me give you the keys and get out of here. I'm preaching somewhere else tonight, so I'll just give you the keys and catch my flight and go. Hallelujah. Hmm, Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Come with me to Daniel, the 10th chapter, the 12th and the 13th verse. Daniel, the 10th chapter, the 12th and the 13th verse. Then said he unto me, Uh-huh. Fear not, Daniel, mm -hmm. for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand mm -hmm. and to chasten thyself before thy God, mm -hmm. thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Mm -hmm. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. I want you to look at me. When was his words had. Say the first day. Say the first day he prayed. Say the first day he prayed. And it took 21 days for the answer to come. 
21 days. 21 days. And you know why the answer came? Because he persisted. Somebody say persistence. Breaks resistance. If Daniel had given up on the 20th day, the angel wouldn't have come. Look at me. Your angels have been trapped and interrupted. They are depending on your persistent prayers to come through. Some of you, your breakthrough and your miracle, you are just a step away from it. Your angels are not far from you, but they need your persistence to come through. Hear me. As a result of Daniel persisting, few things happen. You know the first thing that happened? Somebody say, angelic reinforcement. Say, angelic reinforcement. Say angelic assistance. Yes. Say angelic intervention. Yes. Say angelic undergirdings. Yes. Say angelic undergirdings. Yes. Say angelic undertakings. Yes. I know my English is not American English. Yes. You speak slangs. I speak the Queen's English. My kids are Americans. They all speak slangs. I don't. I speak the Queen's English. Somebody say, I hear you. Hear me. From the first day Daniel prayed, his prayers were answered. It took 21 days of persistence for the angel to come through. An angel was resisted by demonic powers. Do you know how many of you sitting here are ready for a miracle? But for whatever reason, you have given up. You've given up. And your angels have been stopped, blocked, resisted, opposed. And your miracles have been withheld. Because you're tired. You are discouraged. You are frustrated. You're expecting God to move and God says, I'm waiting on you. I've always been ready. The first day Daniel prayed, his prayers was answered. 21 days of persistence. The angel only came on the ticket of Daniel's persistent prayers. If he had given up on the 20th day, the angel wouldn't have come. Church, I know what I'm telling you because anytime I get discouraged, I've been discouraged so many times about so many things. And whenever I get discouraged, the Lord will whisper to me and say, son, you are closer to your miracle than you first believed. <laughs> and if somebody will push just a little. You know, I'm told that when women go into the labor ward to have their babies, when, when, the, when the contractions and the pains becomes unbearable, it is an indication that the head of the child is in the bed can I am ready to come. It's the same thing in the spirit. The Bible says, and as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. When it becomes unbearable, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like quitting, when you feel like throwing the tower in, that is an indication that your miracle is at hand. Somebody shout, yeah! Please sit down for a minute. Before I give you the keys, I want to give you, I want to give you some keys for the next 30 days. See the next 30 days. Of something you must do in the next 30 days and get ready for testimonies in the next 30 days. You're going to be holding services for testimonies in the next 30 days. I know what I'm telling you. These are practical things. They work. Go to Isaiah 62, please. Isaiah 62. For, read from verse 1. 
chapter 2 and verse 6 and 7, please. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. Zion represents the church. He said, tell somebody, don't hold your peace. Don't hold your peace. Don't hold your peace. Don't hold your peace. Tell somebody, cry out. Tell somebody, cry out. My God, my God. Go ahead. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation. Don't rest for the sake of Washington, D.C. Jerusalem, the capital. Don't rest for Washington's sake. For President Trump's sake, don't rest. Pray for him. Pray that God will help him. Pray that God will guide him. Pray for supernatural wisdom. Pray for superior wisdom. Amen? Go ahead. And the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. And all Stop kings... Stop there. Go to verse 6 and 7. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Tell Jerusalem. somebody you are a watchman. You are a watchman. You are a watchman. That is who you are. Watchman. Stay awake. Tell somebody, stay awake. Be vigilant. Be sober. Be on the alert. Be watchful. Go ahead. O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, mm -hmm. day or night, mm -hmm. ye that day make... Day or what? Day and... Night. Day and... Night. Go ahead. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Uh -huh. And give him no rest. Give God no rest. Keep bombarding the throne till heaven comes down. Give him no rest. Go ahead. Until he establish mm -hmm. and until he make Jerusalem. Until, until, until. What does that mean? Stay at it until you see the manifestation. Until he comes to town. You can't quit. You can't give up. You can't be weary. You cannot be tired. And who told you you are tired? The devil. Who told you you can't take it anymore, the devil? The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So where, where is this? I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Where is that coming from? The devil? You can stand anything. You can take anything. You can handle anything. You are capable. You are up to the tax. You were born for this purpose. Say yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That is what we are called for. Now I'm going to give you some few keys and pray with you. And expect in the next 30 days to see mind-blowing miracles and testimonies among you. Come with me to the book of the same Daniel, the 6th chapter, the 10th verse. Daniel 6.10. Daniel 6.10. Let me give you the keys and release you. It's lunch time. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, uh -huh. he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Uh -huh. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. How many prayed. times a day? Three. How many times a day? Three. And did what? Pray. He prayed how many times? Three. In what? In a day. Three times in a day. Everybody say three times in a day. Go ahead, finish it. And he gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. As he did aforetimes. Say a lifestyle. Talk to me. Say a lifestyle. Come with me to Matthew, the 26th chapter, reading from the 39th verse to the 44th verse. Matthew 26, 39 to the 44th verse. And he went a little further and fell on his face. Tell and somebody, go a little further in prayer. Go a little further. Go a little further. Go a little further. Go past where you are in prayer. I know you've been praying, but I need you to go past where you are. Go a little further. Say, but tell somebody, go deep. Go deep. Go ahead, sir. Prayed and saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he, and he cometh unto the disciples, and he findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time. How many times? Two times. Go ahead. And prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And he came and found them asleep again, mm -hmm. for their eyes were heavy. Mm -hmm. And he left them, and he went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. The third time saying what? Same words. Saying what? Three times. Three times. Persistence. Break resistance. And this was Jesus. The word made flesh. Pray three times. And yet we have faith teachers who tell you, well, you don't have to pray the same thing more than once. That is arrogance and spiritual pride. Jesus prayed the same thing. How many times? Talk to me, please. Talk to me. He didn't pray one hour. He prayed three hours. The first time, one hour. Second time, one hour. Third time, one hour. Three hours. Same day. Praying about the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. That is not unbelief. That is enforcing the word. Enforcing the will of God. Superimposing the will of God over the forces of evil. Say, I hear you. Say, superimpose. Say, enforce. Three times, Jesus. How many times in a day do we pray? We don't have a prayer life. We pray when we feel like. We pray every now and then. We don't pray when we are tired. But if you will purpose from today to pray three times a day, it's not how many hours you pray, but it's the consistency of it. If you will take a time and say, I'm going to pray for just 20 minutes in the morning, 20, 25 minutes in the morning, and make time for prayer, just as you make time for food and coffee, and you make time to do the things you think are important to do, make time for prayer. Prayer is a daily necessity for daily triumph. Make time for prayer in the morning, and make time for prayer at noon. At noon. Even if it's 10 minutes, let the kubara hada. Hey, he carabo shada hados. Le adula kawala hasi. Imanda kalawa hasi. Hey, kadala brondo saya. Even if it's 10 minutes, talk to the father. Speak in other tongues. If you have to go to the bathroom, go, go hide yourself in the bathroom. Sometime in the plane, I go in there and I hide in the bathroom. And one time, a flight attendant knocked and said, Mr. Duncan, are you okay? I said, Yes, I'm okay. Other religions pray at the airport. They pray in the plane without apology. And we have to always explain ourselves and apologize for who we are. What is wrong with us? You can do three times a day or four times a day. When you're coming home from work, pray in other tongues. You know, Years ago, I was praying in tongues when I got saved. And my father called me one day and said, I want you to stop praying in that language. And I said, why? He said, when you speak that language, you drive my spirits away. <laughs> my father. And when he said that, I said, wow. This thing is powerful. I'm going to pray some more. Hallelujah. You don't know what happens when you pray in other language. 
in other tongues. When you're coming home from work, just keep praying in the spirit. Edify yourself. Build up your most holy faith. And then before you go to bed, take some five, ten minutes. Be very deliberate about it. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Take some scriptures. Enforce the word. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your loved ones. You can pray four times a day so easily. You don't have to do one hour. You don't have to do three hours. You don't have to do four hours. Just be consistent. Stay at it. Stay at it. Ten minutes a little bit there. Ten minutes there. Five minutes there. Eight minutes there. Ten minutes there. But just stay at it. Just stay at it. And then there will be times you can hit an hour. And you can hit two hours. And you can hit three hours. And you can hit four hours. Just stay at it. Just stay at it. Just stay at it. Just stay at it. For the next 30 days, I want you to, to have a plan that you're going to pray three times, four times a day. Ten minutes here, ten minutes there, ten minutes there, fifteen minutes there, twenty minutes there. Just stay at it. And I'm telling you, you will see such breakthroughs like you've never known it before. You will see goods that were with hell released. You will see the floodgates of heaven open. And you will see the rain of God's blessing coming upon this house like you have never known it before. Shout the air, somebody. Okay, let me finish it now. Let me finish it now. Come with me to Psalm 55 and the 17 verse. I have some more, but I'll stop here. I'll stop here. I'll stop here until... Another time and another day, if God permits and allows me, I'll give you some more. But right now, until then, Isaiah 55 and 17. Somebody say. Psalm or Isaiah? Oh, Psalm, Psalm, Psalm. Sorry. Psalm 55 and 17. Lift up your right hand and say, I shall not die. But I shall live, I shall live. And, declare and declare the works of God, works of God. in the land of the living. Amen. Say, I refuse, I refuse to, be to be killed. I refuse to die, refuse to die. By, any by any mischief, by the hand of the enemy, by, by the devices of the enemy. I refuse, I refuse to be killed. I, I will not die, I will die. but I will live, I will live. and declare. The works of God in the land of the living. You believe it? Shout somebody. Yes. Shout yes. Psalm 55 and the 17 verse. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He shall what? Hear my voice. If I do what? Pray. What? Pray. He shall. If I. How many times? When and when and when? How many times? Can you please covenant with God that in the next 30 days of your life, you are going to be very deliberate at this? That you are going to pray three times a day. And be very deliberate at it. Make time for it. Focus. Don't be distracted. The next 30 days. Three times a day. And do it religiously. And hear me. You will see mind-blowing miracles. I'm telling you. And if the devil sends a demon to attack you and your family, the demon will tell the devil, please send me somewhere else. Not that family, not that man, not that woman. They are too consistent. Say yes. yes. Stand on your feet, shout, scream, put your hands together, give God some praise. I just want everybody to bow your heads here today. 
everything starts with people surrendering their life to Jesus. I see so many people that go to church around the world, but they've never come to the place where they surrender their life. People keep God there like a part-time thing, like something when they get into trouble, please God help. But this is not about that. This is about surrendering our life to him, to give him every area of our life. And sometimes people think when we do that, it's gonna be terrible. No, I'm here to tell you, I gave my life to him 50 years ago when I was five years old. It was the greatest decision that I ever made in my life. When you surrender your life 100% to him, you'll embark on the greatest adventure of your life because immediately what happens is the plan of the enemy is broken for you and the plan of God is then instituted for you. The Bible says, what shall a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You could be worth billions and split hell wide open. The only hope is Jesus. And so that's what this is about. It's about surrender. Let me ask you a question today. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? What would happen if you went home tonight, put your head on your pillow, and in the middle of the night, you passed? Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to the devil's hell. Jesus came and paid the price for you on Calvary's cross that all you have to do, come to the end of yourself and surrender and say, Lord, here I am. I'm tired of living my own life. I'm tired of living the life of self and sin and I come to you and I surrender. I need you. And he will come and he will save you and he will set you free and the power of sin will be broken off of your life and the blood of Jesus will wash you clean. You can pay for your sins. You can earn salvation. It was already done. And he did a good job at Calvary. And he says, whosoever will let him come unto me. He loves you so much. I want to give you that opportunity today, if you don't know him, to surrender your life to him. And maybe you're watching by way of television. This is your moment to surrender to him. Maybe you're here and you gave your life to the Lord years ago, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost that peace, that joy that you once had. And it didn't happen suddenly. It happened over a period of time. Maybe it's something hidden. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust. Hidden things no one knows, but you know. Maybe your wife doesn't know. Maybe your husband doesn't know. Maybe your children don't know. Maybe your, your parents don't know. Maybe your, your pastor doesn't even know, but you know. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something outward that everybody knows about. And now you feel, you know, God will never use me because of what I've done. That's a lie from hell. God is a God of a new beginning and a second chance. But you have to humble yourself to come and receive it and surrender your life to him today. Maybe it's not hidden or outward as we described. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life, a sudden divorce. That'll rock your world. A bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one. People don't know what that means. A sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job, something happened, just rocked your world. But today the Lord says, come to me. Come unto me, all you that labor and have laden, I'm gonna give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn to me, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And then lastly, maybe you're here today, you love the Lord, but you're not sure of your salvation. We had a professor, educated beyond measure. The other night, God hit him three times, and he said, he, I spoke to him this morning. He said, when I fell out of the power, the Lord said to me, you're gonna be with me in heaven. He said, I didn't know that for surety. I didn't know that for sure, for sure, for sure. But on the floor, the Lord said to me, you'll be with me in heaven. Isn't that awesome? And God wants you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is your Lord and that you're gonna spend eternity with him in heaven. Where will you be 100 years from today? Let's secure that here today. Let's secure that here today. So while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you fit into any one of these three categories, I wanna pray with you and for you, right where you are, 
put your hand up right now. Say, pray for me. I need Jesus all across the building. God bless you. 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 Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Put it up high and say, today is my day. I'm not leaving here the same way I came. Today I surrender. Thank you. All right, you can put your hands down now. Now look at me, please, look at me. In this section over here, and then going under the overhang, if you did not raise your hand, but you want to be included in, what, in the prayer we're going to pray right now, quickly, put your hand up and say, include me. Right at the back, right there, right there. Anybody else? Ushers, help me, right there. Yes, sir, I see your hand. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Hands are going up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you, mm-hmm. you. Thank you. yes. This section, yeah, you didn't raise your hand, want to be included. Put your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? Anyone else? This section here. Uh Uh-huh. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Okay. I want every person that raised your hand on those three invitations to stand to your feet right now, please. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet all across the building, everyone. Everyone that raise your hand, stand. I'll just help them. And I want you to come from where you are and come stand around the altar. We're going to pray. Come now. Come. 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 I'll just, just help them. Come. Come now. Come now. He calls you. He calls you. Come. Come. Give him a life today. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Give him a life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. Listen, I'm so happy. We're going to have a bigger altar. Because we've had days when you can't even move here and then they're right up the aisles. You should have been here when 1,800 people come to the altar. It's like a crusade in a foreign country. So we're going to have a bigger altar now. We can fit more souls. Then the Lord is going to give us 40 brand new buses that will run all over the city to bring the people. And I'm going to run the city of Tampa through this place. We're going to, Tampa's going to be saved. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe that auditorium will just be for the youth. No, because of what God's going to do. Don't look at me like that. Get rid of your temper look now because Bishop's coming. I, I, want, you know, I want you to look at him like, you know. What if God gives us such a great breakthrough, 100,000 people are saved and people are plugged in, then where are you going to put the people? So then that'll have to be the youth or maybe the children. The youth will need something to see 10,000. I mean, there's how many people in USF? 30,000? What if 10% of, what if, what if 50% of them get saved? Somebody said, Pastor, you're crazy. No, I'm not. I'm just drunk (laughs) on the new wine. And if the only way you can come with me, you have to drink too. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to stretch your hand out towards the precious people. 
I want you to look at me right now. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. And today, no matter what you've come for, if this is your first time, give your life to the Lord, or you come to recommit your life, or you've come to make sure God's going to meet you. This is why this church is here. This is why I came from Africa as a missionary for you. And today we're going to pray. I want you to close your eyes, raise your right hand to heaven and pray this after me. Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm born again. I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift both hands and just thank him right now. Thank him right now. If you prayed that prayer as I prayed with them, that means you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to hear from you. Go to our website at revival.com and you can email us a prayer request. Tell us that you watch the YouTube channel. We really love to interact with you and send you something that's going to help you in your walk with Christ. And then, of course, you can continue to watch every service is taken and uploaded. Either we are live on YouTube or you can watch it on a rerun as we edit the messages down. And I pray that this YouTube channel is a special blessing to you. I'd love to hear from you. I want to interact with you. You can follow me on Facebook, on my Twitter account, my Periscope account, Instagram, whatever. Uh, all the links are found on revival.com, which is the best place to go. So let's just pray over you right now that the Lord would touch you and empower you and then become proactive in the kingdom that God use you in a powerful way to bring in the harvest of souls. And I pray for His anointing to touch you. Father, touch every one of our friends watching on YouTube. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact their generation, we pray. Heal, restore, renew, revive them even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and interact with us. We want to hear from you. We love you. If you'd like to be a part together with us, then support this ministry and so a seed revival.com. There's a drop down box, online giving, or there's an address on the screen. You can send a love gift to our ministry. Help be a part together with us in the Great Awakening as we travel across America and around the world, lighting fires. So we'd love to hear from you and your financial support is greatly appreciated. From all of us here, we love you. Thank you for being a part. Thank you.